so, we finally meet. Tweak! Always have to spoil the drama, don't you? You little twerp. Oh, no need to be like that, Vigo. So yeah, welcome back to Fur Fighters. This is the final boss of the game. So it's time for us to go and take down General Vigo. To start off with, we're incredibly low on ammo, so we're going to go and get some by going up all of these sculptures and the different areas of the game we need to. Up here on Beaver Dam, we climb up there with Juliet to get some ammo and some meerkats. So before we do anything else, we're just going to go and shoot to Vigo in the face with some meerkats. Gun is not a joking matter. Unless we can take him on uh, man to man at the time, then we need to back out because otherwise that gun is going to destroy us. So each of these different areas of the game, like we're going up the uh, World Quack Center at the moment, is um, able to get up using a different one of the cat's abilities. So at the moment we can use the bungalow to jump up here and get ourselves some neutral bombs. You can also notice that he can destroy these if you hide behind them for too long. So now there's no way to get them all down again. So I'm just going to shoot this guy with all our neutron bombs and then we're going to back up and get some more ammo. Oh, never mind, he's dead. Yep, so we won the game. We killed General Vigo. But for some reason the door opens, so we're going to have to go there afterwards. But first off, let's go and get some more ammo. So each of these teleporters is next to a different one of these locations where you can just use the characters to get to. <laughs> Swimming underwater near the go 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 to get a bit of ammo. Also, interestingly enough, I suppose I should mention that apparently there was supposed to be like a Chinese based uh, level where you were supposed to originally get made from. But it seems like they never actually put it into the game. We should explain uh, Winnie and Maybe in the same location, I guess. The interesting things you note when checking out the Winnie's and games. So the only thing that's left now is to get one with Tweak and then the final one with Rufus. Let's go up Cape Granado and get ourselves some ammo. Because whatever's behind that door is going to be something that Vigo set in motion to uh, destroy us once more, so we're going to have to go and deal with that. And finally, an at a ta 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 Let's go. There's only bombs in here, which is still my uh, least favourite weapon. Which is a shame, because they're so good. They're a very niche weapon, but when they actually work, then they're brilliant. Well, that's everything sorted. Let's go in here and find out what Vigo's got in store for us. out there was nothing but a clone. This machine will churn them out forever unless you find and destroy its six red fuse boxes. Well, that'll explain why he died in a really anti-melodramatic fashion. Yep, so Vigo's cloning himself now, so we can't, there's no point in killing these guys because otherwise they'll just keep respawning. So what we gotta do is jump down this elevator shaft with Tweak and destroy some fuse boxes. As our general said, there's six fuse boxes and there's six fur fighters. So there's going to be one box for each of the fur fighters to find. So that's Tweaks out of the way. And now we've got Tweak, but it's time to move on to the next one. This is basically a mostly linear section of the game now. This boss fight. 
because now that we have Tweak, we can now get to somewhere that needs gliding, which will allow us access to the next character, and so on and so on. So we're just going to avoid fighting Vigo. We'll end up killing his clones once he's no longer able to make any, but while he can still make them, then we'll carry on just avoiding him. So the actual way we want to go in is through that door we just opened up, but I'm just kind of exploring around the place here just to uh, show off what's around the place. And what's around the place is a dead end. But luckily they all missed uh, melee attacks, we're not very good at these clones. So this is uh, obviously a bungalow section above us there. There's a lot of jumps we won't be able to reach. And we've also seen a space out over there that's too narrow for us to fit in. So that's going to be for Chang. And we've also passed by some cat scratches, which will be for Juliet. Sadly we can't close the door from over here, so we can't lock them in here. Even though we can lock them in if they come in here and then the door closes itself. Which I ended up finding later on when I came back. Yep, so you can like, uh, reload over there, or glided. I suppose glided is the correct word. Now we can climb up these cat scratches and find ourselves the next views. I really don't want to fall down there, that would be a really bad idea. And again, sadly this is post-commentary because, um, again, the trying to say not to have an echo on really didn't work, it seemed, with my poor microphone. And the fuse box should be around here somewhere. Yep, there it is. There's nowhere else to go up here, though. Because I was looking for where we're supposed to go with Juliet next, but I uh, didn't notice that I crossed by some cat scratches on the way here. So I ended up just cutting that bit out. So for the time being, let's try and descend in such a way that won't kill us. But it's a problem with the camera angle being as it is, we can't really see what's below us at all. So we're just gonna have to kind of go down and hope that we don't die. There we go, that's the bottom of this place. Now let's try to jump backwards and land back on that platform. So it was around here where I was looking for one, I was supposed to go for Cat Scratches next, but then I totally missed the uh, place I was looking at, because I was looking on the screen, but uh, it's too dark to see Cat Scratches on. Which is really not helpful, by the way. So just climb up here, and then we'll go change it to Rico, because we can hear lots of water. I saw where the fuse box was then, so we got to go and swim around to there. So with this bit here, it will try and push you down, but you have to fight against it and go back up. Because the fuse box is actually up here. And that bit was very slight the first time I played this game, I didn't notice where I was screwing up because I didn't try going up here. So let's destroy that. So that's three out of the six fuse boxes destroyed. And now let's go down. I like how on the outside uh, rings and the things that are swimming through, they seem to be 
facing towards the direction. Like the colours are going this way to indicate that this is the correct way to go. Just so you don't get turned around by accident. Which is good. Like I said, I complain about a lot of the design in this game, so I'm going to call out the good design when I see it. And yeah, this bit, I was actually um, looking down and thinking that that was some water I could jump into. Then obviously it wasn't, it was actually the cloning machine. But for some reason it looked like it was a uh, pool of water. So now we have Rico, we can go over here, where there's some more water. And we can have a dive. This bit doesn't actually need Rico, anyone can uh, seem to go down here. But I think it was probably made so that you were supposed to be Rico for it, to continue the whole linear nature. But you have to be very careful there and fight against the currents, otherwise you'll get dragged out into your death. And that is a very cheap death. It's probably the death that you're going to get on this level, if you're going to get any. Next fuse. That's four down. Now there's only Chang and Bunker to go. We've already seen where we can go through with Chang. Also, yeah, this is um we've got Vigo stuck in this doorway. But sadly we let him out by just getting out ourselves. There's the next views. Now there's only one more to go and then we're going to blow up the whole island. So we've already seen the other place we're supposed to go to as well. There's a second way over here that has a small entrance for us. And there's a big entrance above it which means a bungalow will be able to jump out of there. I'm supposed to go with Bungalow, so let's head out. So the last fuse box is going to be up here. Bye bye Vigo's clothes. And bye bye the entire island. Yep, we've um, effectively destroyed this island now and we need to get out of here. Because pretty soon this whole island is going to blow up. But on the positive side, that means that all the stealth bombers and tanks and everything we've seen are all going to be destroyed as well. Now these clones are a lot easier to kill than the last ones, or well, the last one we killed. So we're going to go and destroy these so Vigo's completely oh. dead. Oh. Oh. And I completely missed through that oh. smart bomb. Oh. There we go. <laughs> There's still a third one though and he's probably hidden behind that doorway still. Yep, there he is. There you go, that's all of them dealt with. Now at this point, you're supposed to just go out with Bungalow to go and face off against the, the final Vigo fight. But since we have the option to change character, we're going to go and change to Rufus because he's the leader. So let's go change to him. All the glass in this area is now broken, so the um, glass planes are actually gone, so we didn't have to go down this water, we could have just uh, run out through the glass. But I didn't notice at the time. And again, just have to run against the currents, make sure you don't get dragged out to your death. 
And here we go, we got Rufus, he's the leader of the third fighters and he's the one who's going to take down Ego. Ego Juliet is my favourite, but you know, Rufus is the leader so he can do it. Yeah, that glass is destroyed so we can just go out that way, so we don't have to change the Chang. So this whole island's been destroyed now, so it's about time to go out and face down Vigo before his island blows up. Ah, oh, Rufus. Just a second. You seem to have fared well enough against my clones, but let's see how you do against the genuine article. Well, evidently he's uh, perfected the genetic mutation he did to all our family members. But we beat all his previous mutations, so we'll beat him as well. So if we shoot him enough, then we'll stun him, and then we can destroy the uh, genetic pack that's on his back. And yet, the entire island is now breaking up around us. So now we're stuck even closer to him. So he's stunned again, so time to destroy the next part of his back. So this fight is basically just circle strafing the entire time. And trying circle strafe into ammo and health. So the arena is constantly getting spawned every time we destroy an extra part of it. I'm not sure if it's due to uh, Vigo himself doing it, or if it's just due to the island itself, since the island is a thing that's getting destroyed right now. It's like, we're on a really strict time limit at the moment, like the island is literally blown up. But we can't let them get away. There we go, and that's the genetic pack sorted. So now it's time to take on the final boss, which is just normal Vigo now. He's got no more tricks in his sleeve, we just have to shoot him until he's dead. Don't go to the movies enough. You should have known villains always do that. You know, Rufus, I've decided that my plans never seem to work because I tend to overthink things. It's my own fault, I suppose, trusting other lesser animals to do my bidding. Is it badly broken? It's completely broken. Might make nice paperweight with plenty of glue. Will take months to fix. You've got minutes, or Rufus is dead. Simplicity will be my new watchword. No more incompetent minions, no more devilish schemes. Just some good old-fashioned ass-kicking. Chang! As soon as you place your vision in the hands of others, that vision is diluted. Try not to get fluff on my suit now. There's a good champ. Jang! Any last words, Rufus? Behind you.
never thought I'd say it, Doug, but I'm glad you're okay. Do you think that's the last we'll see of him? Ah, that sort never seem to get what's coming to them. So what do we do now? What do you think we do? We swim. And that's the end of Fur Fighters, the Go's Revenge. This is a very good game. I'm not sure if I'd say it's one of my favourites, but it's definitely a game that I love playing every time I play it. So it was actually during that um, those final cutscenes that I finally realised that uh, Juliet's voice actor is the same as Liliana from Dragon Age Origins. Her final few sentences absolutely sounded identical to her voice, and as a result I just instantly thought, wait a second, I'm going to Google search this while the credits were actually rolling, and it turned out they were, which was fun. Because she has a great voice, so it's brilliant that she plays Juliet, who happens to be my favourite character in the game, so, well, within General Vigo, of course, but you can't really beat General Vigo, he's great. So it's a very fun game, the controls are a little fidgety, like trying to aim is a problem, but compared to the Dreamcast version, where there's only the one analog stick, it's vastly better because there's two analog sticks, like seriously the Dreamcast. As great as the Dreamcast was, it only had the one analog stick, it was rubbish. Like come on, you tried to do any short sort of game that required accurate shooting and the like, you just couldn't do it, because um, both control methods of the game were to either move with the analog stick or to shoot with the analog stick. So you could either be aiming and shooting with the buttons, where you'd have to press like the um, the top and bottom button to aim up and down, and the left and right button to aim left and right, or you'd have to use them for moving. So you're using buttons to move your character so that you can actually shoot properly with the analog stick. I'm so glad they re-brought it out on the PS2. Is all, is all I can really say about that because you can actually control the game. So yeah, that's uh, that gone anyway. So yeah, I really love this game, it's a really fun game. And the, the comedy it works, which is what I like about it. A lot of games have comedy and it just does not work and it falls flat. A prime example is Rayman 3. If you've ever played Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc and you know the tutorial level from that game, it's cringeworthy how bad that is. Like, it's trying to be a fourth wall breaking comedy and it fails so miserably because they just keep banging on the same points that aren't funny. But this game, every bit, of, every single joke works. Like, every joke has absolutely hits the mark. There isn't anything that I think, uh, that was rubbish out of it. Like, sure, there aren't that many jokes in it. Like, even though it is mostly a parody and comedy game, they're not sort of hitting one line at you constantly, but as a result, it's better that way. Because the jokes we do have are always great. So here we are the voice actors, and here was when I was like, is this the voice actor I thought it was? And it was. General Bristow, he was an awesome dude. Yep, Corey and Kemper, Juliet, and baby Juliet. Absolutely brilliant. And frankly, I now want to just make a compilation of every single one of her lines from the game, and just make that as a video sort of thing, just because I like it that much, and I want to be like, hey, Liliana said all these lines, and everyone would be like, oh, that's fun. And then you get weird people using it to mod stuff, so that you could have a cat in Dragon Age Origins who spoke like her. That would be weird, but I would like it. There are enough weird mods on there for it to work. I kind of wonder what to really say about it, because I mean, like, there's a lot of good stuff about this game. It isn't really so much negative stuff. Like, the controls are iffy to me. Like, the advanced mode that it says to use is horrible, but the beginner mode is far better to use and actually works fine. Like, I suppose if you could really get into it, the advanced mode would be better for controlling the game, but it's like having to press the, the L and R triggers to jump and shoot. I just keep getting confused of which ones it was. Also, this game was brought to you by the power of the human mind. Take that. That's what this game was brought to you by. And I don't get it, but sorry, Joe. I don't get it. I'm sure someone knows what it is, but I don't get it. I'm not a member of their production team.
I suppose, like, Furry Forest was really the low point of the game, but that was the director's cut version, like, it wasn't in the base game, so... The majority of the director's cut brought to the game was good, you know, you, you could play the game, because you could use two analog sticks, and, um, you could have voice acting, which included Liliana, like, that's great. So, that's all solid, really. And the graphics also look better, because I recently um, had a look at what the Dreamcast version looked like, and it does look a lot more aged. Like, the actual graphics don't look as good as this shell shader type. So, this game definitely lives up better, even though it's just like a remake in small ways. The fact that they did cell shading, as they did. Like, cell shading just gives it a completely timeless feel. Like, cell shading graphics does not get old. You know, just take any game that uses it, like um, Jet Set Radio, that also does it. That game doesn't get old, like Killer7 I think does it, that game also doesn't get old, like the graphic just stays solid and also always works. Hello father. Sup mate? Would you like to play Super Snake? Collect the green tokens to make your snake longer. Keep going for as long as you can, and don't crash into the walls or yourself. No oh, thanks that bad a snake. Yeah so um, we didn't get to show the two families that we rescued last time. Winnie. Rufy. Ah, uh, sup mate. Yep, so this is Rufus's bar, by the way. Obviously, has a big Scottish flag there, and he owns this bar. And it's great as a result. That's just the Fur Fighter's private bar. So, we rescued Winnie um, from the bad place, and then we beat her, and, uh, as well as Maya. Or May, rather. Uh, but then, obviously, we went into Vigo and go go straight away because the game automatically puts you there. Um, after, after the cutscene. So, I didn't get to show it before. Also, very annoyingly, we have 1,994 tokens. And uh, I have to make that 2,000. I cannot let this game end without 2,000 tokens. Especially now we have 1,999 tokens. That's horrible. Like, we're missing a single token to be, like, a really nice number. So once we get that many, then I'm just going to end here. So, um... What's up, May? Hey, May? May's not responding. Hey. Hey, May, wake up. Chang. That's right, babe. I didn't mean to shoot you, but you weren't responding. So uh, we get an improved version of Snake with uh, Rufus, and over here we get Bomber Bear, which is the game that we already played in the Thingy Place. Welcome, honourable father. Would you like to play Bomber Bear? Press the X button to drop your bombs and clear a runway so you can land. Man, I just thinking about it then, how great it would have been if there was that China base level. Like Chinese parody in this game would have been great. You still see um, the uh, Super Kai over there. Because that's from Vigo and Gogo. That wasn't there at the start of the game, but since we unlocked it, it stays there now. Even though it's destroyed now. Because we destroyed everything that Vigo owned, including his entire island. Which all blew up in that nuke that we saw, that was inside it. Which is great. But yeah, that Chinese level and rescuing Mai from there, that would have been so good. But sadly, they it seems like they either just dropped it or they ran out of time or something and they ended up uh, moving stuff into the other one instead. Which is a shame. But anyway, that's the end of the Let's Play. We've now got 2,000 tokens, so we're going to call it here. So, until the next game, be lovely to each other, everyone, and uh, farewell. Again, be lovely to each other. Also, loading screen.